go ahead and have a word of prayer, and then after we pray, I will uh, get started. We're going to start a new, a new section tonight on the Antichrist, so I'm, I'm looking forward to this. So let's go ahead and have a word of prayer, and we'll get started. Heavenly Father, Lord, we come before you tonight, and we just ask that you be with us. Father, we just ask that as we study your word, Lord, you just uh, show us the things that we need to learn from um, this study tonight. Uh, just help our hearts follow you, Lord, open our our souls to you, Lord, and just uh, let us see the things that you have planned for us and the hope that you want to give us even in the most difficult times. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, so we're, uh, we're transitioning. So we've spent a lot of time on the rapture. And as we spent a lot of time on the rapture, uh, we were going back and forth on different things. But now we're, we're going to start kind of full steam ahead into the end times now. It's what we're really getting ready to start. And so tonight, the first part of that is the Antichrist. And so we're going to look at the Antichrist. We're going to look at a lot of information. Just to be honest with you, probably going to take us about three weeks to finish the study on the Antichrist. And then once we finish the study on the Antichrist, then we're going to really start looking at each individual event that happens in the end times as we go through there. But to start with, we want to get an understanding of who the Antichrist is, what the Bible has to say about him, and um, some things like that. So we're going to look at this. You notice I got a picture of this guy with a question mark on top of his head as who is the Antichrist. And so one of the most popular questions is, is who is the Antichrist? I'm going to tell you up front before we ever get started, I don't no, okay? <laughs> We're just going to go ahead and save that question as it is now. I do not know who the Antichrist is. So uh, I can tell you what the Bible says about him, but that's about it tonight. So uh, we're going to move on here. And so as I was studying this, one thing that I was kind of surprised about and one thing that uh, I, I came up on was that all three of the... I guess you would call them world religions, three of the world religions, some of the largest world religions, have this uh, prophecy of this man that comes along at the end of times that will rule the world and will bring about the end of the world. All three of these. The first one is, is, is Islam, and, and I want to study these to let you know that, that you know, all of these religions are pointing toward the same thing, kind of, in, in a way. In Islam, this person is called the Dajjal, I guess I pronounced that right. Probably a little southern twang to it, but uh, you know. Uh, but it means deceiver is what it means. This name means deceiver. And according to Islamic teaching, he's going to be a young man and he will possess supernatural powers. He will be the incarnation of evil, but at the same time he will claim to be God. He will gather 70,000 Jewish followers. He'll make a, 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 a tour of deception and destruction, set himself up as a ruler in Jerusalem. But then finally, he'll be slain um, by Jesus when Jesus returns from heaven. And his emergence on the world scene is one of Islam's 10 key signs of the end time. So that's in Islam. In Judaism, they teach that there's going to be this Roman ruler named Armelius. He'll be a miracle worker. He'll lead his armies against Jerusalem. And in the end, Armelius will be killed by Messiah ben David or Messiah the son of David, the true Messiah according to the Jewish people. And then finally, Christianity, he has many names. We're going to call him the Antichrist some tonight. We'll call him some other things. But he's going to be the end time ruler. Uh, he's going to be uh, one of these most evil people that the world has ever seen, if not the, the most evil person the world's ever seen. The prophecy is... It's basically saying that he is going to be the one that's going to bring about the end of the world. And so that is the one we're going to be studying tonight. We're going to be studying the Antichrist tonight is who we're going to be looking at. And so as we begin to get into this, we want to look at the prophecies of him. But I want to ask you a question to start with as we look at this Antichrist that's going to be here. Have you ever, I haven't looked at tabloids in quite a long time. You know, you used to, you were at the, you know, the grocery store, Walmart or wherever, and you see these tabloids there and, and you see all these different things about end times happening or this is happening or this person's coming down or, or something's happening. But have you ever seen, you ever seen those types of things? You, you know, or you watch the news and you hear something on the news or you see somebody say, well, this is definitely a sign of the end times is what it is. And so you see these things and you begin to wonder, well, what is the end times really about? And so what I want to do tonight, as I've done several times, is first of all, I want to caution us. 
As we begin this study, really getting into the Antichrist and the end times, you're going to see that there's going to be a lot more biblical sayings than there are opinion sayings. So uh, that's the reason I started out right off the bat tonight. I don't know who the Antichrist is. Good question. Love the question. But I don't know who the Antichrist is because the Bible doesn't give us a specific name, time, place, and all that. So I can't tell you. But we're going to be looking at what the Bible has to say. It's going to be our only source of information. Uh, I'm going to try not to go anywhere else. We're only going to look at what the Bible has to say. But I will tell you this. Every generation seems to have its Antichrist in it. So just out of, and I'll repeat some of these names for the camera if y'all say anything, but just out of curiosity, who are some of the people throughout history that maybe you've heard of, have been thought of to be the Antichrist, or maybe you thought of being the Antichrist, maybe read a book about it or something? Any people in history from the beginning of time that you've heard that were possibly the Antichrist? Just, who? Hitler. Hitler. Very popular. People thought Hitler was the Antichrist. Anybody else? Okay, how about Emperor Nero? You ever heard of Emperor Nero from the Roman Empire? People thought that he was the Antichrist. How about Napoleon? You ever heard of Napoleon? Some people thought Napoleon was the Antichrist. I got one for you, though, that I guarantee you probably none of y'all have ever heard. Ronald Wilson Reagan. You ever heard that one before? A lot of people thought that maybe he was the Antichrist, and I'll tell you why. Ronald has how many letters in it? Six. Wilson has six. Reagan has six. So they were taking his mathematical names and they made it 666. And we're going to see that's the mark or the sign of the beast or the Antichrist that's going to come. And so, yeah, I let y'all know these things because of this. People have thought from the beginning of time, or, or not from the beginning of time, since the Bible has talked about the Antichrist, people have been talking about this person. And we don't know who he's going to be, but there's been some wild speculations. Some crazy speculations about who it is. Uh, some people even thought, I was old enough to remember whenever uh, Ronald Reagan got shot, and I believe it was Bush that was shot with him, or, or one, of, one of the people in his cabinet that got shot in the head. I can't remember which one it was now. I was going to look it up. But anyway, he got shot in the head, survived, and because of the prophecy that says that the Antichrist will be shot in the head, they thought maybe he was going to be the Antichrist. I mean, it's crazy at who has been called the Antichrist before. And that's why we want to look at what the Bible has to say about it. And what the Bible has to say about it is this. The word Antichrist is only found by one author, and that is John. John is the only author that uses the word Antichrist. Now, that doesn't mean that there's not more definitions for Antichrist, but what the Bible says, the Bible tells us that the Antichrist, who he's going to be and what's going to happen is that word is only found in John. And you can see the verses on your note sheet there. 1 John, we're going to read these tonight. 1 John 2.18, 2.22, 4.3, and then 2 John verse 7. And so you're going to see that that's the only place that it's mentioned. And so that's why it's so unusual to have this kind of study where there's a lot of other names the Antichrist goes by, but the actual word Antichrist that's so popular is only found in John. And so as we go through this, I've already told you, I don't know who he is. But here's what I can tell you about the Antichrist before we get into the, the, the names of it. All we know is this. He will be a real living person. And it will be a he. It will be a male. We know that he will be a real person. He will be alive. He will be walking up on the face of the earth. Maybe walking on the earth now. We don't know when he's going to come about, but he is a real person. He is a specific person, not a group of people. He is a specific person that will lead and control the world. We don't know how exactly he's going to come in power, but he will come in power and he will take control. So as we're studying everything we're going to study about the Antichrist, what I want you to understand is this. This will be a real person. This will not be a... Uh, a an illustration of what's going to happen or anything like that, the Antichrist will be a real living person. It will not be a spirit. It will not be any of those kind of things. The Antichrist we're going to be studying, the one that brings about the end of the times uh, or starts everything in motion, will be a real living person. 
And so as we go through this, we want to remember that as we study everything that's going to happen, and we're going to see what's going to happen with him. So the definition of the Antichrist, uh, and really what we want to look at as we look at the definition of the Antichrist, that word is only found in John's writings. But what I want us to understand is that there are other names that the Antichrist is known by. There are other names that he is known by, and through these names we get an ideal of his character. And we're going to study his character next week. But these ideals have, let us have a little better ideal of who he is. So ten names that he is known by in the Bible that we want to look at really quick tonight. The first one is from Daniel 7, 8, and I'm not going to read these verses, and here's why I'm not going to read the verses to you tonight. Because we're going to go through each and every one of these in, in great detail later and we'll read the verses then. But I wanted to, before we started looking at the Antichrist, I want you to know that he's n known by more names than just the Antichrist in the Bible. In Daniel 7, 8, he's called the small or the little horn. And so we're going to see what significance that is later. In Daniel 8, 23, he's called a fierce king, a master of intrigue. And so these are all defining or being are the same person. In Daniel um, 9.27, he's called the defiler. So you're starting now to see some names that kind of go along with what his character is going to be like, the defiler in Daniel 9.27. In Daniel 11.36, he's called the king, and it's with a lowercase king. And so there's some significance there when we see him called the, the king. He's called a worthless shepherd in Zechariah 11.15. Zechariah 11.15, the worthless shepherd. Uh, right the opposite of what we would call Jesus Christ. Just a quick input there. He's called the man of lawlessness in 2 Thessalonians 2.3. We've read that verse several times and looked at that. The one who brings destruction in 2 Thessalonians, I mean in 2 Thessalonians 2.3 also. Then we see that we're going to study tonight and begin to study, all the times he's called the Antichrist in 1 John and in 2 John. In Revelation 6, 2, he's going to be a rider on a white horse, and we'll see what he's going to bring when he does that. And then finally in Revelation 13, in, ver in chapter 17, he's called the beast. And so as we study the book of Revelation and we study in times, we're going to be seeing all these names, and all these names represent one real living person that will come about and that will be the ultimate evil that the world has ever seen. And so tonight, as we go through tonight and then next week we'll get into this some more, we're going to look at what John had to say about the Antichrist in verses in, in chapter 2 in chapter 4 and in 2 John. We're going to see what John has to say about it. The first place that John mentions the Antichrist is 1 John chapter 2, verse 18. He says this, Little children, it is the last hour, and as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, coming even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. So a few things to note in this verse, because it gets a little confusing, because he mentions two Antichrists. Did you notice that, how he mentions two in here? If you, if you look in the first time, he says, you have heard that the Antichrist, and it's a capital A. I don't know how to do that with my fingers, but it's a capital A. Capital A for Antichrist. This is one person here. This is the one that is yet to come. This is the man. This is the evil one. This is the one that is to come. This is the one that we would say was Hitler was this person, or we would say Genghis Khan, or, or Ronald Reagan, or some of these guys. This is the Antichrist, the capital A Antichrist. This is was talking about one specific person that's going to have one specific reason. And you notice he says that he is coming. So at this time, when John wrote this, he had not come yet. That's very significant in the fact that John wrote this, and John was writing these letters after Nero. So Nero couldn't have been the Antichrist because he is yet to come, according to the Bible. And so John tells us here about this one man, the man that's going to come. He is going to be the Antichrist. But then he goes on, he says, even now... Many antichrist with a lower A have come. And so what this is, 
is this is all the false teachers, all the people that were spreading, uh, denying God, denying Christ in John's day. So if you look through the New Testament, you see Paul constantly warning the church about false prophets. You saw John, uh, uh, Jesus telling them to look out for false prophets. You know, um, a wolf in sheep's clothing. I was about to say a, a sheep in wolf's clothing. A wolf in sheep's clothing there. And so... An antichrist, an antichrist, and we're going to see this as we go through, an antichrist with a lowercase a is anybody that denies Christ, denies God's message, and their purpose and their sole purpose in this world is to lead people away from Jesus Christ and set the world up for the antichrist, capital A. And the world has always, since the time of Jesus, has been full of Antichrist. They've been there since, the, since Jesus came on the scene. The Antichrist have been there. And so what John is telling us here, he's saying in the last hour, the big Antichrist, the one, Satan, the beast, the worthless shepherd, all those names, he will come in the last hour. He will come at the end of time. But even now, before he gets here, you got all these other false prophets, all these little antichrists spreading the falsehood of Jesus Christ and denying God and denying Christ in the world today. And so no matter how you look at it, these are the people that are kind of setting the foundation up year after year after year for the antichrist to come. And so that's the first mention of the Antichrist in the Bible is John's just giving us a warning and he's telling us to not get... In some ways, I think he's telling us this. Don't get so caught up with all the little Antichrists that are spreading all the false doctrine that you miss the big one that's going to come. And I think we do that a lot of times in our world. That you know We call Ronald Reagan the Antichrist or Hitler the Antichrist. And, and we forget that... And I'm not saying that any of these guys did, but we forget that anybody that is spreading false doctrine, anybody that is teaching against Jesus Christ, John's calling them an antichrist here. They're, they're, the, they're that antichrist. And then he takes it a little bit farther as he gives us a better, another definition of the antichrist here. And so he gives us another definition in 1 John 2.22. And look what he says. Who is a liar but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ? He is antichrist who denies the Father and the Son. Notice this is the lower, lower A again in this one. And so what he's telling us is the antichrist... Well, let me back up a second. I forgot to tell you something. When you see the antichrist with a capital A and you see the antichrist or antichrist with a lowercase a, I want you to understand this. All the, the false prophets, all the little antichrist they're going to have the same philosophies, teachings, and characteristics of the one that is yet to come. Okay, So if we're looking at the characteristics of all these little false prophets that are around, the big guy is going to have the same characteristics just multiplied by like a thousand. And we'll see that later as we look at him. So when John here is saying that he's a liar, that he denies Christ, and he denies God, and he denies the Son, that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. So we get a little bit more about what this Antichrist is going to be. The mindset of anybody that is an Antichrist is first and foremost they deny Jesus Christ. So an Antichrist is one that just flat out denies Jesus. They just reject him and everything that he stands for. And that gives us a big clue about what the Antichrist is going to be like when he comes to earth. He is going to deny everything about Jesus. And then it takes it one step farther and says that he also denies the Father. He's going to deny God. He's eventually going to try to set himself up as God. And his intention is to deceive the world. He is a liar. He is going to try to deceive the world to believe that he is God. And so that's what the Antichrist is going to do. In the meantime, you've got all the other Antichrists upon the face of the earth doing the same thing. They're denying Jesus Christ. They're telling people that he's not the true God. They're telling people that he's not the Son of God. And they're telling people that God is not what God's cut up to be, that he's not near as powerful as we think he is, and that we don't need to worship him. And so John gives us a good ideal of kind of his intentions and what he's going to be doing upon this earth when he's here. So 1 John 2, 22. The second thing we see here, or the third thing we see here in 1 John 
is we see the spirit of the Antichrist. We see the spirit of the Antichrist. Look at what John says here in 4.3. In every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist. Notice the capital A again. The Antichrist, which you have heard was coming and is now already in the world. Okay. So this is where we see the spirit of the Antichrist. This is the spirit of the Antichrist that's coming in. So we see here, first of all, we see him denying Christ again. So the Antichrist is going to be one that denies it. But then John says something weird. He says, you have heard he was coming and he is now already in the world. Okay? But notice that it's not the Antichrist that's already in the world. What is already in the world? The spirit. The spirit of the Antichrist. Satan, sin, the spirit of the Antichrist. The spirit of Satan. So in the next couple of weeks, we're going to see where the Antichrist is going to get his power. And I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and spoil it for you. Antichrist is going to get all of his power from Satan. Okay, I'm going to just go ahead and spoil that one for you right now. So what John is telling us here is the spirit. Satan, his power. Let me explain it this way. As Christians, where do we get our power from? God, the Holy Spirit. spirit. His Spirit comes and does what? And dwells in us, and His Spirit gives us our power, right? Okay? So, this Spirit will indwell the Antichrist, the Spirit of Satan, we'll see this later, will indwell the Antichrist and give Him His power. And so what John is telling us here is this Spirit is already in the world, okay? And that Spirit is Satan, and He's been in the world since the Garden, and he's been doing the same thing since the garden, getting people to deny God and turn their backs on God. Well, remember last week when we talked about the rapture and we said that the one reason that the rapture hasn't happened is because God has a restraining hand upon the, the, the world? When God removes that restraining hand off the world, this spirit, Satan, is going to have full power and full control to come in and do what he wants. Okay, And that's kind of where those two go hand in hand, and that's what John is telling us. The Spirit is already here. Satan's power, the Spirit of the Antichrist is already here, alive and well in our world today. But, but, he's being restrained by God. And at some point, God's going to pull that restraining power away, and when he does, Satan's going to be able to come in, and that's when the true, capital A, Antichrist, is going to be born, if you want to look at it that way, or brought about. And so we have the spirit that's already here doing everything it can to set the world stage for uh, the Antichrist, capital A, Antichrist in the world. And then finally, John and the Antichrist mission. 2 John verse 7. There's no chapters in John, so it's just 2 John. I guess you call it chapter 1 verse 7, but 2 John 7. For many deceivers have gone out into the world who do not confess Jesus Christ is coming in the flesh. This is a deceiver and to Antichrist. Notice what they're doing. They're going out into the world. Okay? Very important. These deceivers, and what are they doing? They're not confessing, denying Jesus Christ. They're going out in the world teaching this. This person is a deceiver, and they're an Antichrist. And remember what we said, all these little antichrists have the same characteristics as the big one. So what John is telling us here is that when this big antichrist comes, the, the antichrist comes, when he comes, what he's going to do is he's going to be a deceiver and he's going to deny Jesus and he's going to do it all so that he can set himself up as God and so that he can be worshipped as God. And so John is the only one that mentions this Antichrist, but he gives us an idea of what the Antichrist is going to do. He gives us a view that he, of what he wants to accomplish, not really how he's going to accomplish it, but what he wants to be, what he wants done. One thing I want to, to let you understand, though, tonight is this. The Antichrist's number one mission is to convince the world that Jesus and the God and Jesus and God don't matter and that he is God and so that he can be worshipped. If you study Satan, and I was debating on whether or not to pull this into the, to the lesson, and I don't think we'll spend a couple of weeks studying just Satan, but if you study Satan in the Bible, 
Satan has always been one that said he wanted to establish himself above God or as God, really above God. And this is going to be his opportunity to do that, and he's going to take advantage of God pulling that restrainer away and doing it. So that's John's take on what the Antichrist is going to be and some of the things there. Now, I do want to say this before we close, before we close out tonight, um, as we go through here. We talked about not knowing who the Antichrist is, not knowing who he is. And so another question comes about a lot of times is this question. Is the Antichrist alive today? Okay, and I'm going to take three minutes and I'm going to try to answer that question for you the best I can. It's two-sided coin. Is the Antichrist alive today? My answer is, I believe he is. And here's why. I believe there has been an Antichrist alive since Jesus Christ went to heaven. And here's why. The Bible tells us, Jesus looks at his disciples and he says, no one knows the day or time that I'm going to return except for my Father. Satan has no idea when that trumpet's going to sound and everybody's going to go to heaven and the restrainer's going to be pulled away. Satan has no idea. But here's what Satan has to have. Satan has to have a man that he is prepared and he is groomed and is ready to step up and take power in every generation that there is. Because if he doesn't, when God removes that restraining power, he's going to have to scramble to get a guy. This is my opinion, but when someone asks me, is the Antichrist alive today? Yes, he is. Does he know he's the Antichrist? No, because we're going to see later on how I believe the Bible describes how the Antichrist comes to his power. Does he know he's the Antichrist? No. Is he groomed by Satan? Yes. Is he being groomed by him to do the things that Satan wants him to do? Yes. Uh, one example of this, or several examples of this, all these people throughout the ages that we've looked at that are in power that we thought maybe were the Antichrist, there's a good possibility Satan wanted them to be the Antichrist. And he brought them to power and gave them all that they had with the anticipation of God removing that veil and rapturing the church. And if he would have done that, his man would have been ready to step in. But because God hasn't done that yet, every generation, Satan has to sweep that man to the side. And guess what he does? He sweeps him to the side because he doesn't care about anybody. He sweeps that man to the side. He, raises, he starts raising up a new man. It's what he does. When that man, can, when the, he can't accomplish it, I believe he sweeps him to the side and he raises up another man. And so I believe in every generation, Satan is ready. I believe Satan is ready. And for Satan to be ready, he has to have a man ready. Now, is the world going to know who that man is before God raptures the church? No. I, I was reading some stuff on this, and one, one Bible scholar said this. He said, if you find out who the Antichrist is, and you know the Antichrist by name, you've been left behind. <laughs> is what he said. And he was like, and you don't want to know the Antichrist by name. Okay? Because that means that you missed the rapture. You weren't right with Jesus Christ. And I believe that. I believe that we that know Jesus as Savior, we will never know who the Antichrist is unless while we're up in heaven, we, we're, we gotta, we're watching and knowing things from heaven. And I don't know what that's going to be like. I'll just go ahead and tell you all that now. <laughs> I don't know what that's going to be like. But we won't know. But does he, is he living today? I 100% believe that he is living today. But do I believe that in 20... 50, 100 years, will he still be alive? A different man will be, yes. Satan's man will be there ready to, to come about. And so uh, hopefully I've answered a couple of your questions you might have about the Antichrist. Next week, here's what we're going to get into next week. We're going to look at the Antichrist and the other books of the Bible. So remember, the very first list I gave you were all these other names he was called. So we're going to look at what the other books of the Bible have to say, basically Daniel and Revelation. We're going to look at what they have to say about the Antichrist, and then we're, then we're going to see how he comes into power. As we look at these names, we're going to see how he comes into power, because that's one question a lot of people ask is, well, how, is he going to, how can one person come into power? And, and we're, going to, we're going to see what the Bible says about that, because the Bible kind of shows us that. So, Antichrist. Only one author uses the word Antichrist in the Bible. Who was it? John, all right, so y'all, if y'all didn't learn anything else tonight, y'all learned that John is the only one that uses the actual name Antichrist in the Bible. But hopefully you got a better definition and understanding of who he is. 
You understand that there are multiple antichrists in the world today, but there is one yet to come, and he will make all these other antichrists that we thought were up on earth, he'll make them look like children. I mean, he, he really will, and we're going to see how bad that'll be. So any questions before we go into prayer requests tonight, have prayer? I can repeat them so they can hear on the camera if anybody has any questions. See, I answered them before you asked them tonight, so that's good. Let's close in prayer, and then we'll go over our announcements and our prayer list. But let's have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you tonight for this lesson. And Lord, we know that even in the world today, there are men and women just throughout the world that are denying you, spreading falsehoods, Lord, and, and just being false witnesses to you, denying God, denying Jesus, Father. And Father, we ask tonight for the strength, the knowledge, the wisdom, and the courage to stand up to those lies in our lives, in our families, in our church, our community, wherever it may be, Lord. Lord, I pray tonight that you help us do the things that you've called us to do as your children, and that is to speak the truth. And Lord, that comes from your word. So help us know your word. Help us understand the mission of these antichrists. And Father, I pray that the biggest thing we do is we tell people the truth about Jesus Christ so that they have an opportunity to know his salvation and his love, Lord. Help us with that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.